Today is a very special day because today is the day that we are going to start experimenting with alcohol inks. Alcohol ink is a really exciting art material. Um, this ink is super concentrated, so it looks like a small bottle, but one tiny drop of this ink is going to create a lot of color on our artwork. Uh, with the alcohol ink, we're going to be using rubbing alcohol. And rubbing alcohol is different from the kind of alcohol that we talk about during Red Ribbon Week. Um, this is not something that anybody would ever drink. It is the kind of stuff that you would buy at the pharmacy. So they sell it to disinfect things is the way that people usually use it. You know, you can disinfect a cut or a surface or a phone. Um, we're going to be using it because of the way that it reacts and interacts with the alcohol ink. They go together. The ink and the rubbing alcohol work together the same way that water and watercolors would work together. Um, I want to talk first about our tools and our materials. You're going to have a piece of Yupo paper and this is plastic. This is paper that's made out of plastic. So it's different from the regular paper that we use that's made out of trees. Um, the reason we're using plastic paper is because we want those alcohol inks to sit on the top of the surface we put them onto. We don't want them to soak in. If we tried to do these paintings on regular paper, the inks and the colors would soak in and it wouldn't turn out very beautiful. So that's the kind of paper we're using. Um, the tools we're using are a pipette and a paintbrush, and you're going to um, make sure that only the uh, clear rubbing alcohol and the clean white paper touches these tools. You don't want these tools to come into contact with any of your colors because that's gonna contaminate your rubbing alcohol. You want your rubbing alcohol to stay clean. Um, once you've got all of your tools and you've made sure to write your name and your teacher's name on the back of your paper, you are ready to begin. So I've got three colors that I picked out because they all have the same color cap. The company that sells these inks sells them in sets of three, um, and those colors are sold together because they look really good together when they mix on a piece of paper. So you're gonna wanna go to a table that is using the set of inks that you would like to use. You'll probably be sharing these inks with one other person, maybe two other people. Um, before we get started, we want to also think about what kind of um, metallic ink we would like to use on top of our design. Um, the metallic ink is like the sprinkles on top of the sundae. So if this painting was an ice cream sundae, our alcohol ink colors are like the ice cream. That's going to be what makes up most of the artwork. And then the metallic color is like the sprinkles. That's just going to be a little tiny touch that we add at the very end. Before we get started, we want to make sure that the lids are on pretty good and we want to give each of these colors a little shake. And then once we've got those colors mixed up, we can go ahead and take off the lids. We want to do this now because the rubbing alcohol evaporates really quickly. So you're not going to have time to take lids off and mess around with stuff like that once you start painting. So you want to get everything ready at the very beginning. You also want to shake up your metallic inks really well. You can hear that little clicking sound. There's a, a little metal ball inside of this bottle that helps mix up the metallic really, really good. So if you don't hear that clicking sound while you're mixing it, you need to mix it a little bit harder. Um, once you've got the metallic mixed up, you can take that lid off so that it's ready to go at the very end. And then the next thing that I wanna do is um, put my inks in the order that I'm gonna use them. I wanna start off with the color that is the lightest. So in my set, that's the yellow. So I'm gonna do yellow first. My next color that's lightest is the orange. And then my very last color is gonna be the purple. And then after the purple, I'm gonna be using my metallic gold. Um, before I start painting, I wanna make sure and move all of my tools and my rubbing alcohol off of my paper because I'm gonna be picking this paper up 
as I'm working. So I wanna make sure that I'm able to, to move my paper around as I need to. The first thing I'm gonna do is use my paintbrush and I'm gonna dip it in that rubbing alcohol and I'm just gonna kinda paint some puddles of alcohol onto my paper. I don't wanna paint the whole thing because I do wanna leave some little white spaces where the white of the paper shows through. Um, so I'm gonna kind of look at my paper and just think about which parts do I want there to be color and which parts do I wanna leave white. And if I wanna leave it white, I'm gonna leave it dry. I'm not gonna put any rubbing alcohol there. The next step is for me to put some drops of color onto my paper. And um, with a piece of paper this small, the max number of drops I can do is three. I'm not gonna do any more than three. And these are really tiny drops. You might look at that and think, well, that's not enough. But when you pick up, oops, I'm doing it the wrong way. You gotta pick it up using your paper that's underneath so you don't get ink on your hands. When I pick up that paper and start using my breath to move the ink around, I can see that that little drop of color can fill up a really big spot. If I blow gently, I'm gonna get a small change in where my ink goes. And if I blow really hard, I might get a bigger change. So you can kind of play around with um, how you move that ink around on your paper. You can also use the dropper, the pipette, to drop little dots of alcohol ink on top of the ink that you already have. And you could either leave it like that if you just want a little circle effect, or you could pick it up and use that ink to blow even more, kind of spread it around your paper. Now that I'm ready to move on to my next color, I can dip my brush into the ink and I can't put my brush where the yellow is, but I can add a little bit more alcohol into spots that are white. So I'm gonna very carefully add more ink. I wanna make sure that there are some places where my ink goes off the page. I don't want all of my colors to be floating in the middle of the page. I want the artwork to kind of break the picture plane. I want it to to move beyond just the page. So I'm gonna move on to my next color and remember the max number of drops I can do is three. Um, I could also just do one drop or two drops because this is the beginning of my art. I'm gonna do three drops. And again, that might not seem like a lot of color but we know that when we pick it up and start blowing on it and tilting the paper, that color is gonna spread around really fast. Because I had a lot of white spaces that I wanted to fill, I used my breath pretty hard to get, to get it to kind of spread around more. Um, I'm also gonna do a few drops with the pipette just for some different um, kind of designs. I'm gonna let those kind of grow and change and I could choose to maybe tilt them a little bit if I wanted to, to get different effects. And then I'm ready for my last color. And for this last color, I'm gonna do one drop and then I might also decide to do just a little bit of splatter painting drop. So I'm not gonna do a lot. I'm just gonna very gently kind of tap it so that I get a few colors in different places. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use my dropper to really help that purple kind of spread out. I might also do a drop over here too. And I could leave it like this or I could decide to pick it up and 
just gently move that color around. Now that I have picked it up, I'm kind of regretting it. I sort of wish that I had just left it the way it was looking because it looked pretty cool. And that's part of using alcohol inks is you kind of have to know when to stop um, because the more that you do to it, um, the closer you get to it being too much and it being a little bit ruined. So you definitely want to always be checking in and thinking, um, is this the point? Is this the moment when it looks great and I'm ready to just stop with this color or stop with the artwork as a whole? Um, the very last thing that I get to choose is my metallic. And for the metallic, I am just gonna do one drop. I don't wanna do a lot. Um, I want it to just kind of be a sprinkle on the top of my ice cream sundae. So now that I've got that one drop, I can use my breath. to kind of mix it around. Um, we also are gonna have paint brushes that are specifically for the metallic paints. And you can use that paintbrush to kind of add a little more detail. This is my metallic paintbrush. I'm gonna make sure and not dip it into the cup of rubbing alcohol that I have at my table. Um, when I need to wash it or if I need a little more alcohol, I can use the metallic alcohol for that. What I'm gonna do with this brush is just kind of gently spread that metallic out a little bit. And I can add a dropper of rubbing alcohol if it started to dry. Because the metallic kind of wants to stay in one spot, it might be helpful to just sort of move that ink around and then try using my breath to spread it out a little bit thinner. And I'm looking at it and I am thinking that that looks fabulous. I know that this is the moment that if I keep adding um, alcohol on top of it, or if I were to add more colors, it is probably going to make it muddy and it's gonna lose this magical feeling that I have found. So I'm ready to go and pick up my whole paper um, and go put it on the table to dry and you will get to do three of these paintings. So don't stress out about getting it to look exactly right. Don't stress out about trying to force the inks to do what you think that they should be doing. This process is all about experimenting and letting the art supplies kind of do what they're good at and enjoying the results. Have fun.